Hello and welcome once again to Tileford. Um, it has been a couple of months since I last posted an update and you might want to get the kettle on for, for this uh, video. This is a big one, uh, there's been a lot of work has been completed. So um, sit back, as I say, get yourself a brew and uh, I hope you enjoy what, we're, uh, what I've got to show you. Okay, so well, yeah, as I said, there's a lot of work that's been done um, on the on the layout, and it's primarily scenic work. Um, let me just scan around, and you can see what I've been doing. Um, but in essence, it's working on the station and the high street of uh, of the town, which will be behind the uh, the station. So yeah, as I say, quick scan round, um, and I'll go into a bit of detail about the various bits and, and pieces that I've been been working on. So essentially, um, I've been working on the station and the high street uh, part of the the town scene, um, and so it's all been pretty, all much been been scenic work. And uh, let me just show you around and show you some of the uh, some of the stuff I've been up to. So if we start by by looking at the at the station and um, at this end of the of the platforms, I've put in a um, a road bridge. It's uh, by KS Laser. It's actually two bridges. Um, I couldn't find one bridge that spanned all four lines um, or was the right dimension. So I, I got a couple of bridges from. Um, from KS Laser and have, have done a bit of a, a cut and shut. So uh, this is now at one end of the of the station. You'll also see that I've started to put in some of the overhead lines and it's the Pico um, kits that I've been using. Um, Pico are still saying that later on this year they'll be having masts which span two, three or even four um, lines. So. I'm going to wait for those to come out to do the majority of the layout. Um, but for the time being, I had some of the, the single line masts about and uh, I thought I'd get them installed. I'm not going to bother with the, the lines themselves. It's just too much of a, um, of a faff, to be completely honest with you. So, um, yeah, they'll just be there for, for effect. Um, you can see, hopefully, that I've been working on ballasting through... At least part of the the station. Um, I've not weathered it yet, um, but it's a mixture of a couple of different types of of ballast. Um, not for the first time in my um, sort of modelling career, I've taken inspiration from Everard Junction. I think his ballasting was superb um, with all the different colours and, and shades and what have you. On Cavisham Central, I just went for the plain grey ballast and. Um, you know, with um, well, seeing it now, I think it, it's it's a big improvement. So, we've got the ballast along the um, at least a large part of the of the line, and um, yeah, obviously there's a heck of a lot more to do. Um, I've actually been using the Deluxe Materials Ballast Magic, um, which is a powder that you mix in with the ballast, and um, then you just spray it with with water, and it sets. Um, I found that's been quite good, but I've also then gone over it in the old-fashioned manner with um, the the diluted PVA. So um, I'm hopeful that the ballast isn't going to go anywhere. Um, I also have started to just do some scenic work um, as and where I, I sort of see an opportunity around the the platform. So just trying to make it look a bit scruffy and. Um, a bit of kind of vegetation there so that's the the bridge and the the ballasting okay so just looking at the station for a little while um, as a high level overview it's three platforms um, and it's been that way for a while now and um, with the exception of, of putting the station building in situ and a retaining wall along the, the back and a bit of fencing. I haven't really done too much um, on the, the station up until uh, up until fairly recently. Uh, there will be a footbridge which I'm building and if you've seen previous videos you'll have seen some of the progress on that. 
um, haven't really got much further with that for the time being. Um, but certainly on the, the uh, at least one of the platforms, there, there has been some work. So I'll focus in on, on that. So this is the, the platform that I've been spending a bit of time and, and effort around. Um, it will be the relief line. So local services and, and freight will be coming through this one predominantly. Um, hopefully you can see that I've put in place an embankment behind the, the platform, which then leads up to the, the high street behind it. Um, the embankment is made out of uh, insulation foam with then plaster bandage put over the top and um, given the treatment with um, you know paint and um, static grass and um, you know all the all the other stuff mainly from woodland scenics um, looking at the platform itself it's the scale model scenery downloadable sheets uh, which I've I've used the platform edges um, are recycled from Caversham Central, they're the old Pico platform edges and the platforms themselves were, were recycled from Caversham Central um, they were made out of, of MDF. So let's just look at some of the other detailing uh, along the platform for a moment or two. So as we look along you can see the security fencing um, at the platform ends and also along the, the back of the platform uh, that's the, the Wills kits uh, that I've used and then sprayed them up with grey primer. Um, the matting here to prevent trespassing on the line is from scale model scenery and um, you know really good really easy little little kit to use it just gives those extra little touches of, of realism. Um, you can see that Tarleford has got its own signage um, that is by I think it's Sankey Scenics um, and you can um, you know get your own signage produced and, and customized which is is good um, the lighting is gauge master haven't actually wired the lights up yet what I have done though is given them a coat of um, humbrol enamel blue paint which then matches the you know the signs and, and what have you moving along we've got a couple of billboard posters and these are a kit that I got from eBay um, the eBay seller was called Graphrail, um, and as far as I'm aware, these uh, these are still available on eBay. Really good little kit, quite easy to to put together, and um, I think certainly you know looked apart on the the platform. Um, what else have we got? I've used um, Backman's um, signage and just painted that up blue as well for the, you know, the journey indicators and that kind of thing. And put a few people in place. So as we move along, I think probably let the pictures do the talking for you. And then through to the, the end of the, the platform and the signal box. What I've done is put in place a bit more security fencing at the end and I've just used that really as a bit of a storage area for um, cable drums and all the other paraphernalia that, that can be required. And as we move a bit further along you can see again another scale model scenery kit. This is the the walkway that you can put for, for workers working along the, the side of the, the line and at some point in the future I'll be putting in the yellow protective uh, railings as well. So that really is the, the platform um, and I've got to say I think it's really good I'm really happy with the work that's been done on it if I, if I say so myself. I also like the, the embankment behind, I think um, yeah, that's looking looking pretty good. I've put in place some junk as well, kind of stuff that gets chucked down the side of railway embankments and some 
newspaper and rubbish and that kind of thing. I think there's an old bike in there somewhere um, as well. So that's the, the platform. Let's have a look at the uh, the high street. And what I've tried to do with the high street is not make it sort of too busy and not too much going on. Um, Tolford is the idea of Tolford is it's a uh, you know station on the outskirts of a larger town or city. Um, so I don't want this to be sort of too built up, but obviously we did want to just get a feel of um, you know what a what a high street might look like. So uh, some of this has been recycled from Caversham Central. Um, some of it is is new for uh, for this layout. Um, the buildings are a mixture of either Hornby or uh, Backman, um, and you know they're all the resin sort of you know buildings you can put in place. I've put lighting inside some of the buildings, and um, I've also um, put in place certainly on the low relief buildings some wallpaper um, just to try and make it look a bit more realistic if we zoom in here hopefully you can see there there is wallpaper above the uh, the hardware store and above bargain booze and, and all the rest of it so let's just take a slightly closer look at the high street now the the base of this is is um, is card and then I've given it a covering in grey primer paint. I then added um, a coat of textured, sort of concrete textured paint. And then really I've just been going over it with various shades of, of grey and, and black and and um, just tried to build build it up a bit so it looks, I hope, you know fairly realistic. Um, I've also made sure that there's parts of the road that look as though they've been distressed and, and patched um, which again just gives hopefully a, a decent representation of, of most high streets. Um, the road markings again are, are scale model scenery and um, took a bit of time to just study road markings particularly stuff around the zebra crossing. The pavements are also scale model scenery and all I did there was um, use a couple of pieces of card together to mount them up to be a, a realistic height. So here's the main road which then runs along the back of the um, of the platforms. Put in place a speed camera as well that was recycled from, from Caversham Central. Now on Caversham Central I just painted the road black and um, I've got to say I think this is a, a really big improvement on that. I think just generally, I mean, obviously this is the third time now that I've redone the layout and um, so far I think it's an improvement. That's what we're looking to do. I've used mainly the Backman scene craft figures along the, uh, the street. And there's some more examples of some of the rubbish that, uh, that I've put out there. The bins I'm really happy with. I found these on eBay. I can't remember the name of the seller, unfortunately, but I think those are just really good. They're, they're sort of things that I see around, around where I live. So um, there's the bins. The lights were just um, just cheap, again, off of eBay. I sprayed them up with grey primer and um, made sure I put the right resistors on. They're all wired up and working. I'll show you those in a in a little while. I 
I also installed this little switch um, or set of switches I should say again bought off of eBay and these control the street lights the house lights the Belisha beacons um, and also a, a light that I've put over the um, or in the on the signal box uh, I think I'll get another one of these to control lights on on other parts of the, the layout as well but um, yeah if we just let's see what we go for there we go right so there's the street lights on hopefully you can see that it's pretty dark up here at the best of times so I'm sure you can see um, I, I fiddled around a little bit to make sure I got the right resistors in place um, originally when I put the the lights on it was really really bright and I think that's that's probably something that happens to a lot of people um, I think less lighting is is probably realistic so um, that's what I did and happy with with the outcome of that um, in terms of other lights that we've got we've got lighting in as I said some of the houses um, so I'm not sure if these are too bright or not at the moment I, I'll maybe play it by ear so I can't get this in focus particularly well Hopefully you can well you can see obviously that they they are lit up. The ones one of the other sets of lights that I've put in has been in this Hornby scale dial, what was originally a bank and has as you can see been rechristened Mates Bar um, with a hot dog van outside because you need that. Um, the the lights are I think it's train tech. And um, as you can see for yourself, it's random flashing disco lights and uh, the strobe effect and, and all sorts um, in there. There we go. Look at that. Um, so yeah, good for a bit of a bit of a rave up. Um, as we move around, we've got the Belisha beacons working as well. Um, I partially recycled these from Caversham Central. I managed to break the um, the, the little sort of circuit that um, you know makes the makes the lights flash. I had to buy another one off of eBay. That then wasn't compatible with the original lights. So, long story short, I had to replace the lights with LEDs. And as I zoom in, the the actual beacon themselves. I ended up buying some orange beads, drilling out the middle of the orange bead, and then putting the LED inside. So there was a heck of a lot of love and effort went into the Belisha beacons so um, I hope uh, I hope they look good I bloody want to there's enough as I say enough time and effort went into it um, other than that really the only other um, from a lighting point of view is the light here which is over the top of the signal box so and again um, not sure I've necessarily got the lighting levels right on this one yet. I might need to to fiddle around with it. But that really is the the high street. And um oh the retaining walls as well. Yeah the retaining walls um are KS laser. I, I haven't run out of them so I need to get some some more um components just to to finish it off. Particularly the the brick wall is a brick wall that goes on uh, on the top here. So I need a few more of those. I was hoping to get those from the um, exhibition at Alexandra Palace, but I think it's safe to assume that that won't be happening in light of what's going on in the the world at the moment. So there's the high street with the station in the foreground. More weathering to be done on the, the bridge at the end. The other part of the layout that's had a reasonable amount of attention is the is the fiddle yard. And I've had to take it up and, and relay it. Um, originally it was code 100 track and then um, it would transition to code 75 on the, the scenic part of the layout. Um, but 
some of the rolling stock did not like going over the um, some of the points so particularly these um, TEA tankers the Revolution T's which are um, absolutely superb the wheels are just a bit finer than um, is the case with with Backman and Hornby rolling stock and no matter what I did they just seemed to, to derail um, I did think for a little while about maybe just changing the wheels but then thought well probably better off just going for you know biting the bullet and, and buying the extra code 75 track um, the whole point why I've redone the layout was because Caversham Central didn't always run that well so um, I figured it would be better to just get it right and, and not have as many frustrations this time round. So um, I'm probably about 80% of the way there in replacing the track. You can probably see there's still bits and pieces to be done. Um, it's a real pain, but what can you do? You know, it's uh, if it means that we get the right results with um, good running and that kind of thing, then it's it's a it's a couple of hundred quid well spent. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today. Um, I hope you'll agree there's been some good progress made on the, the layout. I still need to get the uh, all of the signals wired up. I'm still waiting um, for Heathcote to send through a wired up feather signal so I can see what I need to do to get them all up and working. Um, but it, as I say, it's given me the opportunity to to crack on and and do um, what I hope you'll agree is some some pretty pretty good work on the the layout. So I'm going to leave you with a few running shots. Um, thanks very much for checking in and having uh, having a look at what I've been up to. Um, I will post another update as soon as I've got something that I think is worthwhile sharing with you. Um, in the meantime, look after yourselves um, and I will catch up with you soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers.